So, the Xbox and Bethesda deal. For some of you out there who, I don't know, care. I mean, I certainly don't, right? It's like something we barely talked about on the channel. Just a teensy tiny bit, a passing conversation. But for those of you out there who, I don't know, care, we have until March 5th. That is when the deadline is for the EU to make a decision on what's happening with Xbox and Bethesda. So a lot of us are sitting here, you know, curious what exactly will transpire after that. How soon afterwards will Xbox talk about this Bethesda deal? Will it be something that is immediate? I thought now was a great time to round up some additional information and have one last discussion before I anticipate the floodgates open, we get a lot of information to talk about with Xbox and Bethesda, their future with their games, exclusivity, maybe something about Starfield, who knows on that. I mean, fingers crossed, but still, a lot should be coming soon. Certainly the stage is set for Microsoft after Nintendo and Sony have done their respective things, showcasing to consumers what to expect in the first half of the year. I feel like it would be very strange if Xbox had really nothing to do with that but they're in a different position because they have this deal that is closing in just a few days now that does not mean that on march 5th for example xbox is going to come out and say here's an xbox wire post and here's what's happening it's you know possible i guess but i anticipate something much bigger something more along the lines of a celebration between the two companies maybe a video or something along those lines saying hey this is exactly what it means with bethesda joining xbox but today We've got some comments from Xbox themselves. We also have some insiding reports from known journalists throughout the industry to talk about a little bit here. So there's just a couple of bits and pieces I want to toss in to, you know, level expectations, make sure we're all in the right place moving forward. So one more update on the Xbox Bethesda deal. Let's get into it, and then after this, we should just get our answers. So we talked about this during our Elden Ring video, but I think it's really prevalent in this conversation, so I apologize for recycling this, but Aaron Greenberg, who is the lead of marketing over at Xbox, said, just to set expectations, this is not happening. There are always things we have in the works, but nothing coming soon that would feature game announcements or world premieres like this. This was in response to a event speculation by DualShockers suggesting that a new Elden Ring trailer could be at Microsoft's event on March 23rd, which none of that has been confirmed. A lot of that is rumors. The reason that speculation rose up is because, of course, Elden Ring was revealed on Microsoft Stage in E3 of 2019. So for a re-reveal, perhaps Microsoft Stage would make sense again. But now we know Bandai is likely doing their own thing with Bandai Namco next, where we'll see the likes of Tales of Arise and Digimon and maybe a new Dragon Ball game, all of that stuff. So with Aaron's response there, what it does clearly indicate is, of course, no Elden Ring, but more importantly is the second half of his statement where he says that nothing coming soon that would feature game announcements or world premieres like this. So even if they're going to talk about Bethesda, which I think is obvious and much expected, I don't think they're actually going to talk about maybe Starfield, which a lot of us were anticipating. Perhaps it is too early for that. Maybe they don't want to commit to it because if they haven't committed to a 2021 date, then they can't commit to a March reveal. That would, in all fairness, make sense. And I think E3's time period, because E3's live event got canceled, but that time period of June, a presentation for Starfield would make a lot more sense if Bethesda can confidently say, we're going to get this out in 2021, which I do personally expect. If it does get delayed, then a lot of people can have their I told you so moment, but I've been preaching a bit of that Starfield 2021 magic, just putting it out into the universe here. I believe Bethesda will get the job done. But here's the most important part, is that Xbox is saying, at least soon, there's nothing really major happening with game announcements or reveals, which I think is disappointing, because while I'm not super jazzed about really many things that Nintendo or PlayStation announced, I understand the importance of their ecosystem knowing what's coming within the next few months. Seemingly Xbox, if we're to believe Aaron here, which I'll give a reason why it could be in question, uh, having nothing to show when they have a bunch of third-party exclusives coming to Xbox consumers, like the fact that they don't have an inside Xbox planned or anything like that, uh, seems really strange, but I, I do think it's because they're trying to navigate making sure they have a PR window for the Bethesda deal and then a PR window for all of these game announcements for Xbox, perhaps. That is just my personal speculation. Now, I did say that we may have to question what Aaron had to say. That's no offense to Aaron, but honestly, this is the same person. I said this also in my Elden Ring video who when people found the locked Fable account, the locked Perfect Dark account, he was saying, oh, it's just been something that we've done to secure our IP. 
these are dormant, nothing's happening, and then in that same year, both got revealed. In fact, one month after he said that, Fable got revealed, and five months later, we got Perfect Dark from the initiative. So, uh, that once again, no offense to Aaron, but of course, I'm going to take this with some degree of a grain of salt. I trust him, I think he's not just going to put out BS like that, but I imagine he would be somewhat aware of what was happening with at least Fable. Maybe they were thinking about Perfect Dark, when do we want to show this, but at least Fable, I feel like he would have known. So does call it a bit into question. Anyway, after this tweet, Jeff Grubb was contacted because he was the one who really kind of sparked the fire for a lot of people talking about this Bethesda Xbox event or this acknowledgement of what exactly is going to happen between Bethesda and Xbox. And here's what he had to say. I definitely never said it would be at any Xbox event in regards to Elden Ring. Afterwards, Jeff said, as far as I know, Microsoft will talk about Bethesda when the deal closes, but I wouldn't even expect Starfield there. E3 if it's ready, and then a presentation around E3. So Jeff Grubb's been pretty much mostly correct in the past, so that's why I tend to approach his word on the channel along with people like Jason Schreier as not fact, but you know, hey, let's run with this a little bit, let's discuss this a bit, because they have yet to really prove me otherwise. So when it comes to Xbox and deciding exactly when they want to reveal Starfield, I do think the later the better because I do think there may be that Xbox hype driving it, but I also am of the mindset that Starfield could use a little more marketing room compared to something like a Fallout or an Elder Scrolls, which is very familiar to a lot of people. They know what they're getting, so it doesn't involve that heavy amount of advertising. You just go, oh, another Fallout game. Oh, another Elder Scrolls game. Whereas something like Starfield, maybe it does market itself because it could look so good, who knows? But I just feel like Bethesda wants to get the word out for more than, if we're going to expect their typical cycle, five months. That's less than half a year. I feel like they'd want a little bit more than that, in my personal opinion. But Jeff is saying that he wouldn't expect Starfield there, which is the big reveal for what's happening between Bethesda and Xbox. And I do have to say, I would find that a little bit strange for Xbox to do, although unsurprising. Uh, the reason for that is because I feel like right now Xbox is in a solid position back compat and Game Pass wise. Like they just made another batch of Game Pass editions with, a, with sports titles and Star Wars Squadrons is there now. And I know that may not be everyone's cup of tea, but at the end of the day, that's going to boost their service. So they're doing very strong moves across the board. The FPS boost for back compat is going to be huge down the line, I think, because you got Nintendo's charging you 60 bucks for Skyward Sword and Microsoft's like, hey, we're going to make this game run at 120 FPS you don't have to pay anything you just have to own the game so I think yeah down the line Xbox has some really good value moves but when it comes to games which I think obviously matters the most uh, I do think Xbox is in a really awkward position because they have a list of exclusives on an Xbox wire post of things that are third-party deals that will be releasing exclusively on their consoles on PC not on PlayStation at the very least for their perspective and they haven't really talked about it vocalized it much and I think what I'm learning as I look at Xbox more and more and more is that their PR can be questionable, you know, especially like we're looking at a company that's still doing CGI trailers and maybe it's because they would be quiet for even longer. But right now, I think they're just in a very awkward position where their only game in 2021 should not just be Halo Infinite. There needs to be more. It's not there should be more. There needs to be more. And I'm talking beyond the third party. Something else needs to be ready, which is why I'm saying they're going to try to push Starfield. I think they're going to see how much they can get it done. Can they call in other Xbox game studios to help out with the development of this project? I would not be surprised if they tried to pull all strings to get a double giant exclusive launch in the holiday period. But in our first little discussion there in response to Aaron Greenberg, we saw the date March 23rd. And where exactly did that come from? Well, there's a pretty solid site out there called Therat, and the runner of that site, Paul Therat, tweeted, Microsoft is apparently holding a what's new for gaming event on March 23rd to be followed by a what's new for Windows event. No date yet. Now, I don't know about all of you, but when I heard this, I thought to myself, okay, this sounds more along the lines of a business type of event that consumers can watch and get something from. So it's not going to be an E3 or even an Xbox gameplay showcase, which granted it was bad, but that was still a event that I think was more geared towards gamers. 
I do think it's going to be something along the lines of earnings calls. Remember how a lot of us have sat down for earnings calls and we hear what exactly companies are planning. In fact, that's how we started to hear that EA was planning a, they called it HD remaster for one of their popular titles, which ended up being Mass Effect. So you can get scoops through those things. And since I think Microsoft could potentially be speaking to like shareholders or something along those lines, we're going to get an idea of future plans. And you might directly just hear we're making these games exclusive or not and why that will drive their platform forward and why it makes them a more valuable company, but still relevant to consumers like us who want to see exactly what's happening with gaming. Because Microsoft, I think about a month ago or a couple weeks ago, did a little something where they were showing off things for Windows programs and um, it was very much where you were getting announcements for consumers, but it seemed business focused. So unfortunately for a lot of us, this may not be the most fun sounding event, but an event nonetheless, and perhaps a place we can expect to hear more from Xbox's future in 2021. I do think that it may end up being two separate things. I think the Bethesda thing's going to happen. They're going to talk about it. It's going to be its own thing. And then later on, they're going to do a what's new for gaming. I don't know if they're going to wait till, let's say the deal closes on the 5th. I don't think they're going to wait two plus more weeks and say, let's talk about it then. Uh, to me, that just feels like such a gap in time when they've likely been operating under the assumption that, hey, Xbox owns Bethesda for a couple of months at this point in time, at least for a good month or so, where they've had to have gotten the ball rolling on what exactly is going to be said, what exactly is going to be done, that type of thing. So ultimately... Not a lot of crazy information here, but enough breadcrumbs to create a discussion on what Aaron Greenberg's saying versus what's being reported by Paul Therott, what Jeff Grubb is saying, and eventually it does call into the conversation of when we're running with the words of a bunch of journalists, while I do trust them in their reporting, they are people saying things, right? And they say it within a safety net so that legally companies can't run at them because we've seen in the past... Uh, game companies have had no hesitation to come after major leakers. I think usually talking is one thing, but when it comes to gameplay screenshots, trailers, that type of stuff, a company will not hesitate to come after you for that. We've seen it across the board from Activision to Gearbox. We've seen some major rundowns when it comes to leaks. So there's a lot there to absorb, to think about, and ultimately we will have our answers pretty soon. But for now, I just wanted to make one more Xbox Bethesda video squeeze it in here before we get that deal done talk about the future of what is to come personally i'm expecting just new ip to be exclusives but i would not be surprised at all if xbox locked it all down certainly i think if this was a playstation type of acquisition this wouldn't be a question anymore so i suppose it shouldn't be a question for xbox but time will tell fingers crossed for the best here we'll see what exactly happens but i leave it in your hands now let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who are pushing the limits of the content here. We're nearing 400. Appreciate each and every single one of you who are buying into what I'm doing here. It means the world to me. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.